In this video we're back at the Red Bull Ring in two daily race Bs. Let's see if we can avoid the chaos and bring home some decent results. Hey guys and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of GT Sport related stuff, subscribe now and click the bell icon so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. You join me during my qualifying session for the two upcoming races in Daily Race B. You'll see here we're going to come across the track and do a 137.9 which isn't as good as I'd hoped, but as you can see I only did three laps and I really should have done more. But anyway, let's go on to the race. So that short qualifying session puts us in ninth place on the grid for this, our first of two races at the Red Bull Ring. We're in Group 4. We've got five laps in each race. Let's see how we get on. As always, coming down into the first corner here at the Red Bull Run, I definitely think this is the most dangerous, as I've said before, but we're gonna get through without any problem. Someone's gonna get punted behind, so that's one of the perils there of that, but we've managed to make it through without any problems. There they are, they're behind us, squabbling away, a big angry pack behind us, but we're looking up in front and we've got eyes on 8th and 7th. Coming down into turn number 2 for the first time, as you can see up ahead, the Frenchman there in the Peugeot gets squeezed out a little bit, which is going to compromise his run coming down into turn number 3. We're down the outside here, and we're going to stay down the outside and try the cutback on him. So I'm going to break a little bit earlier, keep it as wide as possible on the entry, and then tighten up on the way out. But to be fair to him, the Frenchman's done a good job and he's managed to keep on the position as we're coming down into turn number four. Now we're both going to run wide a little bit. I'm going to carry too much speed. Really, I want to be on the inside there on that rumble strip. And the same again as we come into turn number five. I do a much better job here so I can get on the power much earlier, giving us a run through turn number six and down into turn number seven. So I'm going to pull alongside him here try and break as late as possible whilst giving as much room as possible and we're gonna make the move stick you can see him drop off there in the radar so after one lap we've managed to avoid trouble and make up a position if you look at the mini map up ahead you can see that the front five have broken away only a little bit but they're still broken away so realistically in this short race we're gonna have to try and get Sixth. I think that's always going to be possible for us in this one. We started too far back down the grid, which was important to our qualifying, but I think we can still have a shot at sixth. So coming into turn number two again, there's going to be a bit of contact with the two up in front. They're both going to run wide there, and there is going to be a penalty for the German. So in these situations, I try and just do my best to be as quick as possible and as smooth as possible. It's easy, as you can see more contact up ahead here, to be distracted by the two up in front and try and push too hard. You'll see it a little bit there as I run a little bit wide, but I shouldn't be doing that because these guys battling is going to let me reel them in anyway. Keeping my eye on the rear view there as well because we have to be considerate of the Peugeot that we overtook earlier, who's coming back into play here but there's also going to be a penalty for the Italian. So if I can stick with these guys, I'm hoping that sixth place is going to be possible. The German there is having a look up the inside into the penultimate corner. He's not going to go for it, but look now, we're right up with them here. They're side by side. We get a bit of a slide on ourselves, but we're going to have a run on the Italian here. He's going to get the slipstream of the German, but that's not going to be enough. We're going to be side by side here, coming into turn number one for the third time. So I break so that I stay within the track limits, and the Italian just goes right the way up to the wall. So probably not the most ethically correct way of holding on to his position, but it is what it is. He gets a penalty there, and we live to fight another day. But keep your eyes in the rear view here, coming into turn number two and we're just going to get smacked straight up the backside by the Frenchman in the Peugeot there which loses us a boatload of time it also gets him a penalty so both of us are worse off 
I've lost probably about a second looking at the delta. We were three tenths behind and we're now 1.3 seconds behind. So it definitely hasn't helped us as we run wide in at turn number three. That's not going to help us either. And these guys have managed to get a good distance away from us. We're about 1.8 seconds now. And I don't really think I'm going to have enough time to catch up to them but we will see I'm going to push as hard as I can as you can see going onto the gravel there but it might be a little bit much of an ask for this one fast forwarding here to the penultimate lap we're just about going to the final lap here and if you have a look up ahead the Italian I think gets the laps in his head wrong as he seems to scrub his penalty just before the line one lap early. Now the new penalty system that is in place for the FIA events unfortunately has not yet come across into the daily races. So in the FIA events there's gates around the track that will slam on your brakes to serve your penalty as soon as you go through them. I think here on the Red Bull ring we've got one just coming out of this corner here. There's normally some gates there and there's also some gates further on down the lap before you get into the last two corners but that isn't the case yet I'm hoping it comes across in the next update or even earlier in a patch so for now we've been carrying our penalty and we're going to have to do the old classic getting rid of it just before the line here we go then this is how I'm going to have to do it I'm going to have to slam on the anchors see how we time it up and yes we time it up pretty well and we come across the line in seven. Now in between races I decided I was going to do some more qualifying here. You can see my record is a 137.9 and I'm going to manage to just shave a little bit of time off it, about three tenths but every little helps. So moving into race number two here we're again starting in ninth despite our better qualifying position but we are in a much stronger lobby. So coming down to the first corner, keep your eye in the rear view mirror here. This is why I think it's one of the most dangerous first corners in the game. And you're going to see the Lamborghini come through and just absolutely take out the Mugan behind us. We were very lucky not to be taken out ourselves. But we've done it. We're all right. We've just survived. And we can look onwards to the rest of the race here. And our strategy for this race is exactly the same as in the last one. So we started in ninth in the last one and we got up to seventh. So now that we started again in ninth, let's see if we can beat seventh place. It's going to be much harder in this one because it's a much harder lobby, but I still think that with some decent racecraft, we can make it happen. There is, however, a slight difference in strategy between daily race B's and daily race C's. So you're going to see it here as I'm going to show him the inside to hopefully compromise his entry line. It's worked a little bit, he's gone a bit wide but he's held on to it well. I'm going to do the same again here, keep it as tight as possible and hopefully get a run on him coming through turn number six here. But that hasn't happened. I'm going to do the same again so hopefully he's going to run wide coming into the penultimate corner. The reason I am doing that, as it works a little bit, he does run wide and he gets his exit speed compromised, is because in daily race B, I can't just sit back and make a move happen when the opportunity arises. We just don't have the time, so we've got to force these moves. I'm going to look up the inside again, coming into turn number one. I've actually got no intention of making that move, but I'm hoping to make him think that we will make that move. Problem is though, I'm going to make a mistake myself, get a right tank slapper on coming out of turn number one which is going to compromise our speed coming all the way down the back straight and we're going to fall into the clutches here of the Spaniard behind but you'll notice also that I'm defending much harder than I usually would and it's again because if I lose this position I just will not have enough time in this sprint race to get it back so whilst it was only for ninth place keeping this ninth place was ultra important because it now frees me up to recoup and get back after 7th and 8th who you can see up ahead are still battling. 
we fast forwarded to lap number three here you can see all the leading cars up ahead there so it's quite close to at this point and keep an eye on the Spaniard in seventh who's going to run wide there he's got himself a penalty earlier on in the lap but these guys are now side by side so this could be the opportunity that we need to not just overtake one of them but both of them that's what we're going to be looking for as we come down into turn number three they're side by side here they both lose a ton of time we're right on the move right behind them now but we just need to be patient we need to be smart and probably the best time to make a move on one if not both of them is going to be down into the penultimate corner the ring curve so as you can see the belgian has just dropped a wheel onto the gravel there which is going to compromise both their exits coming out of turn number six so this could be on here if they both try and go side by side down into turn number seven it's not going to go well so i'm going to break a little bit earlier and if there's a gap which there is i am going to go for it and we're going to overtake both of them so that has come about because the belgian in seventh place had to scrub off so much speed because he was on the inside coming into the corner which made the angle of the corner tighter which compromised his exit speed now to be honest watching this back i could have been even wider but it doesn't matter you get the point and we've made the move stick so we're now up to seventh here we do have a 0.8 second penalty though which we need to be aware of we need to get our head down and get away from these guys so i can serve that penalty and hold on to this position you'll also see as a side note there that i delayed my turn in because i saw that the spaniard in the lambo behind in the turquoise lambo was coming up the inside he broke much much later than me i could see him arriving in the rear view and on the zone map so to avoid contact i delayed turning in so that is a skill that i would recommend everybody try and practice because there's quite a few of them behind us here it's going to be extra important to get away as i say i would recommend that that's a skill that you guys start trying to practice when the opportunities arise because if i didn't have my awareness up to the max and noticed that he was arriving in the rear view and in the zone map i would have turned in as usual there would have been contact i probably would have been spun round and as you saw by how many people were in the chasing pack I would have dropped right down the field and in a race especially as short as these daily race bees it's something that you just cannot afford to do so tip from me guys is to avoid contact make sure you're aware of all your surroundings now I had prepared and had settled for seventh place if I'm honest but as you can see here the Italian in the land in front has run really wide in turn number three and now we've got an opportunity to get up to sixth. So I'm going to keep as deep as I can on the outside here coming through turn number four. You can see him all over us there on the radar but we've managed to keep him at bay. We've done it again through turn number five trying to get on the power as early as possible coming up the hill through turn number six and over the crest down into turn number seven. But in an unexpected gift, we're actually up to sixth place here. We're gonna to have to do the same thing with the penalty. Hopefully I'll time it as well as we did last time. But as we come up to the line, we're gonna slam on the anchors and we come home to take sixth. After those two results, we actually lose 500 points, but I enjoyed those, so I'm not too worried about it. And that is the end of the video guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.